We are back from closed session at 6 10 p.m. And re reconvenience to open session. Um, e, F, announcement of action taken in closed session. Mr. Jimenez? There are no actions at this point, Madam President. G, presentation number one, dual language program. Thank you, uh, Madam President, uh, board members, and members of the audience. At this time, I would like to ask Ms. Silvia Yanis and Ms. Noemi Esquer, our coordinators of, um, of um, EL programs, uh, uh, to the podium as they're going to do a brief presentation on our dual language academy. Thank you. Good evening, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Jimenez, and good evening to all. I am Noemi Esquer, accompanied by my colleague, Silvia Yanez. It is our privilege to present to you exciting developments regarding the launch of the Calexico Unified School District Dual Language Academy. We're excited and humbled by the opportunity to be a part of this great and collaborative endeavor. The launch of the Calexico Unified School District DLI Academy in the fall of 24-25 school year marks our district's alignment with the direction of educational innovation and multicultural enrichment. The launch of the CUSD DLI Academy will provide an environment, a place to use and leverage the strengths of our students, that the strengths they come with, strengths such as their native language, their cultural heritage, in order to nurture their richness and assets embedded within them, the ones that they come with the ones special and unique to our community. We would like to point out that the logo for the DLI Academy was a collaboration at the suggestion of ACT with Mr. Zayas, the art and AP art teacher at Calexico High School. We're very proud of it. So that's the logo that you see up here yes. in front of the, the uh, so students created this, this logo. We're very proud of the logo, thank you. Dual language immersion is a unique educational model where students learn, read, write, and communicate naturally in two languages with the goal of academic and proficiency and by literacy. The program structure will be based on the research-based principles and structure set forth by the Center for Applied Linguistics and the California Association for Bilingual Education, better known as CABE. We have added a fourth pillar uh, that we feel is just as important as the first three pillars. The first is bilingualism and biliteracy, grade level academic achievement, cross-cultural competence, and the fourth pillar that we have added is parent and community partnership. Parent and community partnership with the goal of parents being empowered to become active participants. Oh, pardon me. There we go. There we are, sorry about that. With the goal of parents becoming empowered to become active participants in their children's education. Learning a language boosts brain development, allowing for improved executive function. Those are the benefits of dual language. In addition, learning more than one language results in performing better on tasks that require divergent thinking, pattern recognition, problem solving, and higher levels of metalinguistic awareness. Our students are preparing for a workforce where the nature of jobs are evolving rapidly and some don't even exist yet. This quickly and constantly changing environment depends or demands not just proficiency in routine tasks, but also adeptness in non-routine complex thinking and interactive communication skills. Dual language education equips students with cognitive flexibility, social intelligence, adaptability in this professional environment that we will face. It's an opportunity to be seized, especially in our community, an assets-filled community. One Harvard researcher states bilingualism shapes our brain for a lifetime and isn't that true right that's what we're preparing our students to do through the dual language academy the launch of CUSD's dual language academy is in line with the state initiative called global California 2030 with a tagline speak learn and read 
The goal of the initiative is to prepare students for a globalized world to expand access to language learning programs, particularly dual language immersion programs, and to ensure that every California student graduates with proficiency in at least two languages, all by 2030. And now my colleague Sylvia will, will share the goals, research, and the work that we've done toward the launch. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kerr, Silvia Yanez, ELT coordinator. So what are the goals of our uh, dual language academy? Well, first and foremost is to build bilingualism and biliteracy, be able to speak, read, and write in two languages with the academic proficiency using our state standards, also to achieve academic excellency outlined by the state standards, complete and build socio-cultural coursework in the two languages, Spanish and English, and become knowledgeable and provide experiences in the different cultures. Also to understand and appreciate the diverse um, cultures through curriculum and create this new partnership with parents as Ms. Esker stated, our fourth pillar and part of our goal is to build this partnership with parents where we empower powers, uh, where we uh, bring parents on board and empower parents to become active participants in, in being part of the child's education. And this creates an excellent opportunity and a very exciting opportunity to collaborate with parents. What does the research indicate? Well, uh, it, it indicates that dual language program students score above or average, uh, above average, I'm sorry, compared to the national norms, especially in grades six through eight. It also, in some studies, have uh, researchers have compared with the state norms that students from dual language uh, programs, in many cases or most cases, outperform their monolingual students. Uh, we already know, based on research, that it takes about five to seven years for students to fully develop a second language with academic proficiency. So now launching this program here at Calexico Unified is, uh, School District. So this program is designed for English language learners and we're targeting our English language learners. Uh, we will be using the state standards in the two languages and our goal is to build biliteracy, academic proficiency, and cultural competency as well. So we're starting where we are. So we're, we're starting a new campaign and we have a schedule, a series of parent meetings through our, um, our elementary school sites. Um, and so to get feedback and the interest and get in interest, gauge interest from our community members regarding the academy, the dual language academy. Ms. Yanis, how's that going? Uh, it's going well right now. We we're barely starting this week. We have two more weeks to go. We have also uh, talking to our principals, and we're thinking of presenting especially to TK classes mm -hmm. uh, and preschools. We're uh, going to join Ms. Uh, Siri Hurtado in some of the presentations that she's doing in the preschool programs as well. Uh, we're also planning to have a Zoom meeting uh, for the evening and maybe get some parents that were not able to make it either in the morning or in the afternoon because we have a schedule throughout the day like 8.30, 9, 10, 1, 3. And then we're off we will be offered another one in the evening as well. What we have noticed is that parents at all grade levels are interested. We have seen parents, fourth grade, uh, fifth grade parents who have said, oh, I wish I would have gotten this before. Um, and so ri right now what we're planning to target is TK parents and preschools. And, and so uh, to share with the board, so our launch is going to be a dual elementary school. Uh, we've had already meetings with the principal, Mr. Silvana Lopez, and our teachers at dual elementary school. Um, our primary grade teachers, primarily our uh, TK kinder and first grade teachers, uh, we, we uh, took on a field trip to uh, Rice Elementary School in Chula Vista where they've had a very long standing dual language. Chula Vista has uh, uh, just renowned dual language programs in the state of California. So we went to one of their elementary schools with very similar demographics as dual elementary schools. And we spent the better half of the day there uh, visiting every one of their, uh, of their Spanish class and their English classes from TK through sixth grade. 
Uh, we met with their with their principal, with their teachers. Uh, we met with their uh, um, uh, a district uh, representative. Um, and so uh, we're going to start off uh, small at uh, uh, with the dual um, elementary school um, t t TK classroom and kindergarten classroom. And then from there, uh, on year two, grow it, and not only grow it at uh, dual elementary school, but also expand it to some of our other elementary schools. We're looking at Jefferson, we're looking at Rockwood, we're looking at Maines, uh, we're looking at Blanche Charles. And so grow it by year, year two and continue growing it um, 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 moving forward. Um, our, our goal is to offer parent choice, right? To offer it as a educational option for parents. They want to continue doing the SEI, non-dual language program. We're going to continue having that option for them and they can enroll their kids in, 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 in that program. But if they want the option of, of a dual language uh, bilingual program, you know, we want to provide them that program as well. So uh, um, I'm very familiar with the uh, dual language programs. Uh, they're very, very powerful. They're very effective. Um, one of the things that I've seen is that schools that start off, you know, with both dual language and SEI programs, eventually the demand for the dual language is so strong and so heavy because you literally have kids learning in act two languages academically. Um, and, and that's that's a very powerful thing. Uh, one of the slides that went up there um, where it compared to the United States where about 20% of our students are learning um, uh, uh, in a second language, a dual language, compared to 60% of students just in Europe uh, that are growing up bilingual and, and, um, and bi biliterate. So um, I, we know that some of the other districts in the Valley also um, are already offering dual language programs. Uh, so we definitely don't want to fall behind and we want to also offer our community, uh, like I said, parent choice and give parents those opportunities to choose what they want best for their child. And if they want uh, the dual language program, we want to be able to offer that program to them. So we want to grow it, but we want to do it right. And we're starting at one school, two grade levels, and then grow it from there. Thank you for that. Any more questions? No, I was I was going to ask how quick are we going to move mm -hmm. to other schools because I think it's one of those programs that once you get it started right away, you know the impact needs to be a multi grades and not just at right. at the at the beginning. Thank you. Right, and, and, and we're cognizant of that. The other thing too, as uh, Ms. Ramirez, our assistant soup of of Ed Services, has been conducting a whole bunch of uh, LCAP meetings uh, um, at all of our school sites and meeting with parents and meeting with the community. Ms. Esquerra and Ms. Yanis have also, that's been part of the presentation about the dual language program in addition to the meetings that they're having about this program. And the, the, the interest is definitely there. Um, I actually think that our, one of our problems is gonna be, um, you know, probably having more of an interest than what we're gonna be able to have capacity in, but we have to start somewhere. There's a lot of considerations. There's the curriculum, there's the, the, the books, there's you know uh, the training, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, uh, but we're very, very excited and we're, we're starting it, uh, but definitely um, I think in Calexico, I think this is gonna be very successful. Thank you everyone and thank you for your support on this great um, Dual Language Academy. I think with your support, we're gonna make this happen, definitely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. H, comments from the pub public? Do we have any comments? Okay. <coughs> I, consent agenda, all items appear and will be acted upon one motion without discussion unless any item is pulled for separate <laughs> consideration and action. I'll second that motion. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, J, informational items. Number one, superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam President. I am very excited to share with you uh, this evening 
uh, some of the success stories and accomplishments um, that Calexico Unified School District has had only in the past several weeks. Um, I'd like to uh, start off by uh, uh, just recognizing uh, that our new um, A4 building out here, our, our STEM and uh, a building and um, different class 16, 16 classroom building um, is up. Uh, I'm not sure if you, anyone was able to see it, but the, we're up brought in blocks and modulars are called, and they were put together like Legos. So for kids who like playing with Legos, keep doing it, because you know, there's, they're building buildings like that nowadays. Uh, um, the stairs came in this week. Uh, the stairs are prefab, and so they're gonna bring in a crane and, and hang up the stairs and, and, and bolt them in, and so, um, I want to thank our, our construction partners uh, for uh, just working diligently on our A A4 building and bringing the state-of-the-art facilities to uh, to Calexico Unified School District. And thank our community as well. Thank our, our, our although A4 is not measure Q, it's not the, the bond measure yet. That's going to be the building starting in the very near future. Nevertheless, uh, with the support of the community, we are able to uh, revitalize our high school and bring in some uh, uh, much needed um, uh, new facilities. I also want to congratulate our um, FFA program, um, our Future Farmers of America, uh, for their performance at the county fair. Um, under the, the, the leadership of our FFA staff, uh, Mr. Ms. Polens, Mr. Mendoza, Mr. Roman, our, our other staff there at the FFA program, uh, we struck gold with over 27 uh, gold ribbons um, at the FFA and a whole number of other first and second place and third place uh, uh, ribbons at the county fair. So congratulations to our FFA program for a job well done. Um, I also want to congratulate our, our Mesa Club, our Mesa class, with uh, under the direction of Mr. Magallanes um, uh, for uh, also taking first, second, and third place uh, um, uh, trophies at the Imperial Valley um, uh, Mesa competition. Uh, we've got third place in the uh, Math Escape competition and second place first place in the machine creativity competition, second place in the Mesa machine competition, and uh, first place in the coding solutions. Uh, so I know that our director of in, uh, informational technology, Eddie there, is pretty impressed with the coding solutions, but, uh, uh, and we are too, so congratulations to our Mesa club. Um, I also want to congratulate our uh, Calexico High School uh, drumline and our uh, uh, cheerleaders and all of our students who participated in this year's uh, uh, high school madness. Uh, we also took first place at the high school madness. Um, it was it was a great sight. Our kids were incredibly excited about it, full of energy, and uh, they really represented their school spirit and their community pride. Uh, uh, for us um, out there at the county fair. And so congratulations to all of our students in the high school madness for, for bringing home the first place trophy. Um, I also wanna congratulate Aurora High School. Not only did I think at the last board meeting I recognized them for receiving their WASC accreditation, uh, but Aurora High School also received a, a model continuation high school in the state of California. So for the next three years, they will serve as a model uh, school in the state of California um, uh, for, for their work that they're doing. So to Mr. Ariola, uh, formerly there, Mr. Moreno, and to all the uh, teachers and classified staff at Aurora High School and all of the uh, district staff who support uh, uh, Aurora High School, congratulations to all of you for a, a great job at the um, uh, with the model uh, continuation high school. I also want to congratulate uh, Enrique Camarena uh, for being recertified uh, for another three years as a schools to watch uh, from the uh, California Schools to Watch program with the California Department of Education and the California Middle Middle Grades Alliance. Uh, they had to go through a recertification uh, process and they were recertified 
And last uh, week, I believe, it was Ms. Um, Ramirez and Mr. Diego Romero and some of our other uh, staff were at, um, uh, at a conference where uh, they uh, received this prestigious recognition from CDE and the California Alliance. And so I want to congratulate all of our teachers and classified staff, our administrators um, at um, uh, Enrique Camarena uh, Junior High School for uh, uh, a job well done and for all of their, their hard work and dedication in making this happen. We know at the last board meeting they um, uh, presented about their school and we could see why uh, they are the recipients of this award. And, and last but not least, uh, for uh, all of us in here, for anyone that's listening to um, uh, this board meeting tonight, I want to invite all of you to um, our Saturday, March 23rd, uh, uh, Parent, Collection Cleaner High School District Parent Summit. Uh, we're going, it's a Saturday from 8 to 12, and we're going to be um, um, having a, a important, valuable information for parents. Uh, on technology, on working on social emotional learning, uh, information about drug prevention, um, how to support your child at home, uh, working with anger management, positive behavior change, uh, nutrition and healthy recipes. So we have a flyer that you could look up online or uh, at your child's uh, school. And we hope to see you there on Saturday, March 23rd at our um, first annual Parent Summit. And uh, we're going to uh, have something really nice for all of our parents and with different community partners um, providing their information as well. I'd be remiss. I almost forgot, but I said um, last but not least, but this one is the last but not least. So um, uh, we um, are super proud of one of our um, um, JROTC students and law enforcement students, uh, Ms. Carol Favela. Uh, Ms. Favela was awarded the ROTC scholarship from the from the U.S. military that uh, awarded her $180,000 to go to school. Uh, there were close to 200 applications, and only I think it was 52 were awarded. And our very own Calexico Bulldog was one of the 52 out of 200 who got this full ride scholarship to go to any one of the 160 some universities in the state in, in, the, in the country uh, with an ROTC program. So we're very, very proud of Carol. I'm thinking uh, Madam President and board members that at another near uh, 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 board meeting we could bring her in and, and recognize her and ask her, <laughs> right, right. Uh, no, her money's gonna go to her education, uh, but um, but we're very, we're very proud of her and, and, and of her family and her parents, uh, Chief Johnson, uh, uh, Mr. Davidson, uh, uh, Davies, I'm sorry, and, and all of our, her teachers and, and all of our uh, staff for doing what they're doing and making a difference in the lives of our children, of our students. So that completes my report. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Number two, ROP committee. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, um, Madam President. Um, IBROP, January 29th, IBROP uh, staff assistant, Mr. Uh, Camarillo welding class to San Diego for a tour to the Ironworks and Sheet Metal Workers Union facility. Uh, they also served as chaperones for that trip. Uh, February 20th, IBROP staff assisted with the Ag Career Awareness event by contacting organizations to table the event. IRO DP uh, staff also provided a career exploration survey to all Willie Moreno Junior High uh, students where approximately 500 students uh, participated. And February 23rd, IVROP staff <coughs> organized the public skill event at IVC where 14 of our students participated um, and they were led by Mr. Davis. Um, our high school came in second and it was second uh, out of five schools. They did well, Mr. Jimenez joined us and it's, I'm very proud to see our young men and women getting prepared for their future endeavors. And last but not least, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Davis and the students for the second place win and hopefully next year we'll be hosting that event here in our campus. And 
One more uh, thanks is to uh, Adriana and Vicente who are represent IBROP for uh, actually coordinating this event. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Number three, board reports. Sierra. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all doing well this evening. Uh, I just wanted to wish all the juniors a good luck on their testing uh, and to try their best. I also wanted to remind the seniors and juniors that there are still scholarships available that they can find it on the website or talk with their counselors. And wanted to congratulate Carol Favela for winning that scholarship and wishing all the, sp the season sports right now to try their best and to have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Uh, good evening again. Um, First, I'd, I'd like to start by congratulating the six students at Aurora High for uh, completing all their requirements, high school requirements. That's a good sign, so hopefully more to come in that school. And, uh, <clears throat> and also congratulate those students that are in currently in our recovery program because they can graduate if they actually put themselves to it. So again, congratulations to these uh, students. Congratulations to all the FFA students. Um, it's one of the first to get all these gold um, ribbons, so it's good it, uh, if we can see that the program is working and hopefully uh, we can improve our showmanship uh, next year. And also, um, just to remind everybody, April 23rd, our varsity uh, baseball team will be having a once in a lifetime event or opportunity at Petco Park. And they will be playing against Southwest. So with that said, I'd like to put the superintendent here on the spot. Is I'd like to see some, if we can send some students, some buses out there to um, cheer for our, our players and hopefully we can bring uh, the win to Imperial Valley. Um, so um, I'm sure that um, we can find some money somewhere <laughs> To get these students Maybe up there. Maybe we could ask uh, Favela, Miss uh, Carol. Well, uh, hold on, uh, that's <laughs> a let second. Let that's, let uh, that's, that's coming. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, can we? And uh, again, um, this is going to be a good, a good event, and hopefully we can see some of you there um, cheering our, our, our team. And <coughs> maybe, and also maybe, I don't know if we have to check with Petco, but maybe our drumline, since our drumline has been winning everything, to take them out there and and actually let them do their thing. So someone needs to follow up on that with Petco. Mr. Moreno is already on it, and so he is following up on this already, and he's um, uh, looking into the rally buses and also looking at our, at our drum lines. So um, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Calderon, when you shared this um, earlier. Uh, we got on it right away, and we're looking into this, and I'm glad uh, you're putting me on the spot publicly. Uh, <laughs> so now the pressure well, is on. Well, after all, they won uh, champ the CIF championship last year, yes. if you recall. So yes. they deserve it. Yes, absolutely. We, we yeah. agree. And best of luck to our, our baseball team for, uh, uh, you know, showcasing at Petco Park. I'm sure it's uh, playing under in a professional stadium um, is, is uh, a, a only a, a dream for m most of us, right? A yes. And our kids get to do it. So absolutely. And thank you. And uh, again, also congratulations to all the athletes of the uh, winter sports. So hopefully um, we'll improve next year. We did get to some the uh, CIF, but weren't successful. So again, congratulations. And last but not least, congratulations to Carol Favela for the, the uh, recipient of the scholarship, $180,000. That's remarkable. So again, congratulations, Ms. Favela. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Mr. Contreras? Well, first of all, I think we need to move Mr. Uh, Jimenez to the back of the line because then he tells us everything that we were going to say. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I agree with you. So I'm just going to echo that. Uh, <laughs> I motion that. <laughs> that, <laughs> that item from that uh, I don't know Mr. if I Jimenez would say has, so on that. Has, but <laughs> <laughs> has said, uh, you know, one of the things that I want to thank is the dual uh, language program for the terrific job that you guys are doing. I think it's, you know, moving us forward with our community, making sure that, you know, um, that, that we make the appropriate advancement, right, that is going to help our kids. Um, and, and our parents, as you added the fourth pillar in there, I really like that. Um, and I think it's, it's something that will allow us to continue to grow. Um, 
I would like it to be faster, but you know, we will wait on that. Um, the recovery program also, you know, uh, Mr. Jimenez has kept us in informed of the uh, changes and advancements on, on some of the recovery program, the number of kids that are signing up, you know, and, and even though it's, it's a recovery program, you know, it's good that we see the numbers that are coming up on it and the kids that are taking advantage of it. You know, I'm pretty sure it's from both pressures from the academic side and the parental uh, side, and I really appreciate that those, those numbers are coming up. Um, and then the school, uh, the school project for the high school looks, it's looking great, you know, but again, I would always like it just to be done by now, but <laughs> you know, uh, everything else looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Contreras. Myself, um, first I um, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I would like to thank everyone that's working very hard for the dual language um, academy. I think it's very, very important, and and especially for us as um, uh, as a well, me as a second um, language learner, um, when we are spe speaking and then we're we're trying to um, think about the word and then it's better for us to learn it academically, right? Um, I also want to um, share that I was able to um, be at the A4 building when they started the the first um, block or Lego. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was, yeah, it was really nice to be there. It was a, a very nice experience. Um, also, I would like to congratulate the FFA students and staff for their hard work. Congratulate, um, congratulate the cheer team and the band, stu band students um, in the March Madness. Congratulations again, congratulate um, again, and the Camarena High School and their staff and teachers. And also again, congratulate Carol Favela for her scholarship. So that's it. And uh, Mr. Contreras, I agree with you with the comments you said. <laughs> Thank you. That's all. Okay, so K action items. Okay, action items, consideration and action approval of the following items. Number one, approval of fiscal year 2023-24 second interim financial report. Mr. De La Torre. President Magallanes, uh, trustees, uh, Superintendent Jimenez, uh, Colexico staff and guests, thank you for the opportunity to present to you the second interim report. Uh, the second interim report is a strong collaboration with everybody in the business team. So I'd like to recognize Vanessa being here as well as Cesar being here. So thank you for being here. Um, it takes a lot of work to put an interim report. I found that in Calexico it takes even a lot more work than the u ones I used to do before. So I'm going to go through the presentation at any point in time. If you'd like to stop me and ask me any questions, please do so. Um, the report itself in the uh, board agenda is about 145 pages, so it's probably going to take us about three hours to go through every page. No? <laughs> A summary. Um, as you well know, uh, school districts are required to present to the board uh, two interim reports. The first interim report was presented to you during the December 14th meeting, um, which covered the uh, actuals through the uh, end of October, and then today we're presenting to you the second interim report, which covers actuals through January 31st. You know, I I've done uh, many, inter many second interim reports, and one of the things that I have often said is that at the second interim report, we really don't see a lot of changes from the first interim report, right? Because we're taking actuals through the end of January, and we had already assessed those actuals through the end of October, and we use those to work with the team to make sure that we're mapping out the expenditures. We use the actual data to project out and extrapolate that data to see what the end of the school year is going to look like. Um, in this case, I do have to say that we're going to be seeing some significant changes. Um, and the board was presented with some of these significant changes during the first interim report, but there's been even more updates uh, in the, um, I was going to say in the interim between the first interim and the second interim, right? The um, California, yeah, I, I know that everybody's well aware of the California budget timeline, but today is even, or this year is even more critical than any other year. Um, as you can see up there, um, we did have some significant changes when the governor announced their January 10th budget. And I'll speak a little bit more about some of those significant changes in the upcoming slides. 
Um, there's still a lot of negotiation that's going on between the governor and the legislator, legislature. Um, there's still a lot of discrepancy between what the governor says is the deficit for the state of California and what the LAO says, um, the legislative, Alan, uh, Alan is <laughs> legislative analyst office says is the uh, deficit for the state of California. And of course, a lot of things are still pending. Uh, one of the biggest things that's still pending is we're all gonna be filing our taxes if we haven't done so already. Uh, and so the state still has to figure out what those revenues look like, right? And of course, we have until the 15th of April or somewhere around there to file our taxes. So there's still a lot of uncertainty. We do anticipate that we're gonna be seeing some other changes uh, coming up as the governor and the legislature ne negotiate um, what, what kind of things that they wanna add to the, bu to the final budget. You see up there, of course, that uh, by May 15th is when the governor announces the budget, but they're still negotiating even after May 15th. So a lot of the school districts uh, are looking to see how much information we can have because we're gonna be presenting to you a July, uh, an estimated actuals in July first budget coming up pretty soon, but there's still gonna be a lot of information that is still gonna be a bit uncertain. So what are those major factors that are influencing the district budgeting? You have seen many of these before. Um, and one of them is the ending of some of those one-time funds. The one that's coming up uh, at this point is ESSER and the funding is ending September 30th and it's one-time fund. Whatever investments we made with it, whatever expenditures we made with it, they can't, we can't continue to have continuing expenditures as we move forward beyond September 30th. So that's a big impact to a lot of school districts. The change in enrollment patterns, as you can see, it's no um, surprise to anybody that school districts throughout the state of California are experiencing declining enrollment as well as uh, reductions in ADA through chronic absenteeism. So we're not exempt from that. One of the things, um, as you see at the bottom bullet there, um, we're seeing some cost increases. One of the things that uh, really um, should put some concern for all of us is uh, the continual inflation because that reverberates throughout the whole agency and throughout the whole economy, not, not only for the school districts, for, but for everybody as, as well, personally speaking, right? So these are some of the things that, that we're looking at. Uh, I will say that on the bright side, the governor is really working to protect education as well as the legislator, legislators, but the governor is really working hard to, project, to, project, to protect uh, education. You can see some of the discrepancies up there between the difference between what the governor is saying and what the LAO is saying as the budget deficit for the state of California. So I'm gonna grab my water here for a second. One of the things that I wanted to highlight, you've seen this um, assumptions and planning factors uh, and this is where we see one of the biggest changes between the first interim and second interim report. As you can see up there, when, um, when the July 1st budget was first developed, uh, we were anticipating certainly that 8.22% COLA for the current fiscal year, and that hasn't changed at uh, second interim. Um, we were anticipating and projecting out uh, for the subsequent years, 24, 25, and 25, 26, projecting a 3.94 COLA. At first interim, the governor was talking about a 1.76 COLA. Well, today the governor is talking about a 0.76 COLA. So you see that big difference there. For the out year for 25-26, the same thing. Some of those projections that we school districts did considered a potential 3.29% COLA. Today we're talking about a 2.73 COLA. It might change, it might still be reduced, uh, there's some rumblings out there that that 0.76 may turn into a zero. And then, of course, at the bottom there, and uh, where it says minimum wage, uh, minimum wage continues to increase, and that impacts inflation. That impacts and it reverberates through everything that we do. So those are some of the things that we have to be cognizant about. On the right-hand side, you I know you've seen this graph before, um, but the benefits of the three-year ADA average that the state of California implemented to sort of hold harmless the school districts, that's really coming to an end. 
So a lot of the school districts are anniversarying the lower um, ADAs that we're experiencing. And so we're gonna start getting closer to our true uh, ADA as the years progress out and we, we don't have that benefit of the whole, whole harmless that was um, afforded to us through the three year average. Um, this is the this is the comparison again at first at second interim we're comparing we're comparing um, the projections that we made at first interim and what we anticipate is going to happen throughout the rest of the years exploring that data that we have through 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 October 31st at second interim um, we do see some significant changes you see. Um, some of the funding that is going to be a little bit different. So you see up there that at first interim, our total revenues were projected to be $190 million. At second interim, our revenues are actually going up, right? And the reason why they're going up is because we've the, the staff at Calexico Unified School District is working really hard to ensure that we continue to leverage other resources, other funding sources, so that we can continue to provide services to our students. Those additional resources are really beneficial to the school district because it allows us to leverage those additional funds to cover some of our fixed expenses, right? uh, to amortize the cost of some of our fixed assets. Um, the team is committed to continue to do that. So on the bright side, we do it see an increase in revenues. Because we do see an increase in revenues, well, of course, that'll turn into additional expenditures. And at the bottom there, on the expenditure side, you see that we're projecting at this point, $231 million in expenditures. In our first interim, we were projecting $222 million. The net effect uh, in this point in time is that we actually have a reduction to our deficit spending, but deficit spending project projection nevertheless. Right? Um, at first interim, you were presented with a projected deficit spending for the current fiscal year of $32 million, which is a lot of money. At this point in time, conservatively, we're projecting a deficit spending of $30 million, which is $1.7 million less. But again, deficit spending nevertheless. And we have to be cognizant of that. Um, what that does on those bottom numbers for us, of course, it projects out our ending fund balances are gonna be a little bit better for the end of the fiscal year. So then we, we move into our multi-year projection, right? So that was a comparison of second interim to first interim. Um, and now we gotta take a look and see what's gonna be happening for the subsequent years, 24, 25, and 25, 26. So there on the left-hand side, of course, you continue to see the second interim projection of $30 million in deficit spending. For the subsequent years, um, our projections right now, as was presented to you before, still shows deficit spending. And it's a very conservative deficit spending of $10 million for one year and $10 million for the, for the next year. But again, deficit spending nevertheless. Right? So one of the things that I, I really wanna make sure that we understand is can we deficit spend? Yes, we can deficit spend. How long can we deficit spend? Not very long. Right? And it's not until we deplete our reserves because we really have to be cognizant of our cash flow. We have to be able to meet our obligations. And right now, there's no problem for us meeting our obligations, but we just have to be very conservative in what we do and where we spend our money. On the right-hand side there, um, you're able to see um, on the top portion there is the um, LCFF calculator and the revenues that it projected at that point in time. And at the very top, you see that it was 130, 130 million for the current fiscal year. At the bottom, at the second interim, you see $131 million. Again, it's an increase because uh, the governor really is protecting education for the current fiscal year. But for the next years, uh, we were originally projecting $131 million, as you can see on the top. And at this point in time, with the .76 COLA, we're projecting $127 million. That's a significant drop. And then you can see those same amounts for 25, 26 and for the at first interim and 25, 26 at second interim. So again, why are we projecting deficit spending? Um, you know, we already talked a little bit about that um, and it's now no surprise to any of us or all of us, I would say. Um, 
declining enrollment, um, chronic absenteeism, um, birth rates are lower, birth rates are projected to continue to be lower. Uh, so how do we gain more students in our school district, right? And I think the school district is doing some great things that like dual uh, language that could potentially bring additional students into our school districts from other communities. The other challenge that we have is those high contributions that we are required to include, right? Uh, PERS is going up again uh, from 26.68 in the current fiscal year to 27.3% for the next year. That's about a, almost a 3% increase, right? And we're only getting a 0.76 COLA. That doesn't pay for it, right? Inflation continues to increase. Uh, the last CPI numbers that were put out still has inflation at about 4% year-over-year uh, -year inflation, um, and the 0.76% per COLA doesn't pay for that. Right? So how do we balance the budget? Um, well, the district is being very intentional in addressing our staffing ratios, ratios um, by attrition. You've seen the presentations already in regards to that we're not, um, we're not laying off people, we're just adjusting the positions that we currently have. So vacancy analysis is really, really important for us in order to be able to adjust um, and look to save funds wherever we can save funds. Uh, maximizing the use of restricted funds, as I mentioned before, the more that we can use those restricted funds um, to continue to provide high quality service to our students, but also to amortize the cost of our fixed expenses and improve cost recovery, that'll help our general fund, that'll help our reserves. Um, and along with those, with what I just mentioned, of course, is seeking additional federal grants as much as we can. And then reduce general fund district wide operating expenses as much as we can, right? And we're being very intentional about that. So, on a closing note, um, you know, I, I know that I threw some drastic numbers at you, uh, but we are in a good place right now. We just need to make sure that we work together to continue to be in a good place. Uh, the interim report that's been presented to you in the board agenda allows us to request from you a positive certification. Uh, we are able to meet our obligations. We have sufficient cash flow. We have sufficient cash flow to pay our staff. We have sufficient cash flow and revenues to pay our vendors. Um, so uh, tonight, uh, we're requesting for you a positive certification for the second interim reports. If anybody has any questions. Have any questions? No, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Thank De La Thank you. Torre. So do I, is there a motion? So move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Contreras, second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number two, approval of 2024-2025 instructional school calendar. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Wilkinson, Hadley King, and Co. LLP for 2023-24 through 2025-2644 multi-year auditing service. So moved. Second with a quick question or comment. Go ahead. I guess the question or comment is, um, I think Mr. De La Torre just kind of covered some of that yeah. as into us getting a positive. Um, uh, if you could please just relate some of that information to this item. Thank you. Um, certainly, uh, Mr. Contreras, the school district has been working with uh, Wilkinson and Hadley for many years. Um, and we had a contract with them, and so we're looking to renew their auditing services. Uh, at the December uh, meeting, I know that uh, Brian from Wilkinson and Hadley made a presentation to you regarding the audits for the fiscal year 22-23. We took a look at their cost. Uh, they came in as the least expensive of the auditors. The, auditing, the auditor selection process is managed by Imperial County Office of Education. They're the ones that submit uh, quotes and requests for us. 
Uh, personally speaking, um, I work with Wilkinson and Hadley, uh, where I was at before for several years, and they're very knowledgeable, they're very responsive. So um, I think it's a, a good um, um, idea for us to definitely continue with them for the next three years. Thank you. Oh, question. Thank you. Uh, so it was a motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number four, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Automated Vending Solutions, Inc. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number five, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Imperial County Air Pollution Control District to accept the grant through supplemental environmental project to fund the installation of a new digital sign message board for the school flag pro program at several sites, several sites district wide. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number six, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Pixabyte Solutions, Inc. to reconnect audio video system at Godfrey Gym. So move. Second. I'll second it with a question. Motion by Mr. Contreras. Go ahead, Mr. The question is, um, this is a fairly new construction. Um, why do we have to go back in there and, um, and connect or reconnect audio and video? Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Calderon, for your question. I'd like to ask our coordinator of um, uh, information technology, Mr. Eduardo Perez, uh, to address the question. Good evening, board trustees. My name is Eduardo Perez, technology coordinator for Calexico Unified. Uh, to answer your question, uh, Mr. Calderon, is um, due to the modernization of, of Godfrey Gym, and the audio video system was not part of the scope of the project. And uh, we tried to uh, reconnect that art in house, but definitely uses some uh, specialized cable, and, and it and it requires for uh, we prefer if the vendor reconnects that those cabling to in order to for the system for the audio video system we have about ten screens uh, at Godfrey Gym in order to properly work in uh, at that venue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aye. I, I'm going to repeat it again because my mic was off. So it was a motion by Mr. Contreras, second by Mr. Calero Calderon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number seven, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Valley Petrol Petroleum Equipment, Inc. to replace the clock gauge to the gasoline tank at Felipe Vega facilities. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number eight, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Wireless PMP to rewire five classrooms at Calexico High School. So moved. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by myself. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number nine, First Amendment agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Handling Systems, Inc. for the maintenance services of the pallets, jack, and forklifts at the food service department. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number 10, First Amendment agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Lower Sanitation to increase the approved not to exceed amount for the septic services. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number 11, Second Amendment Agreement between Calexico Unified School District and EFR Environmental Services, Inc. to provide additional services for hazardous, hazardous voice removal. So moved. Second that. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 Number 12, Third Amendment Agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Zonar for four additional GPS and inspection units for two vehicles for the expanded learning program and two vehicles for the food service department. So moved. Second that motion. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Number 13, resolution authorizing, um, authorizing cooperative purchasing for technology, hardware, software, and related services 
from Apple Inc. So moved. Motion by Mr. Calderon. Second by myself. All those in favor say aye. That's a resolution. Aye. Except for House of Resolutions. Second by myself. Um, Sierra? Yes. Mr. Yes. <laughs> Calderon? Yes. Mr. Contreras? Yes. Myself? Yes. Number 14, resolution regarding certificated layout at the conclusion of the 2024 and 2023-2024 school year. I uh, move for approval with the comment. And I second it with also with the comment. So it's just that the comment is that this, this is a uh, reduction of current positions for the purpose of adjusting the, the staffing ratio, um, you know, and to try to eliminate any type of uh, dispositioning of of individuals out of the job, right? That is correct, Mr. Contreras. This is for uh, current planning and for future planning. Uh, we are uh, uh, working on our on our master scheduling and our staffing um, ratios throughout uh, the the district um, at uh, elementary, junior high school, and high school. Uh, we are trying to also um, account for our programs, uh, our student population our reduction in student population through to the loss of enrollment. So um, as we did with our classified positions, uh, we are not pink slipping anyone. Uh, that means that we are not laying off a person. Uh, we are uh, adjusting uh, our, our, our staffing assignments through attrition and through vacancies. Uh, so no one um, at uh, for the 23-24 school year um, is, is being laid off. Um, everyone continues to have their job at no loss of hours, no loss of work year, no loss of salary, and, um, um, and, and no loss of total compensation. Uh, we're working really hard to be able to try to continue doing that. I cannot make no promises. I do not have a crystal ball, and I cannot predict 24-25 uh, and beyond, uh, but uh, I feel... F um <coughs> Fortunate that um, when you hear of other school districts in the state uh, laying off uh, 20, 40, 50, 100, 300 or more um, employees that are actually being pink slipped and losing their jobs, I feel fortunate that um, we've been able to um, um, address uh, the, the challenges that we're facing financially um, uh, with the loss of student enrollment as well uh, through uh, vacant positions and through attrition. Thank you. You had a comment? Well, I was going to ask the same thing. I wanted his version of it so the public will, would know what, why we're doing or why we have this item on the agenda. But most important, um, for like prior years, we don't have any presentation from the ACT or CSCA here. So it's my belief that there must be an agreement with this item because normally if that was not the case, it would probably be here. So again, good job with what you're doing. And hopefully um, as we go through, I mean, we just have seen the interim report. Uh, we have to cut. I've been telling you um, that we need to cut on some of the expenditures, but hopefully we'll continue and finish out the year without any layoffs. Thank you, Mr. Calero. And I think you know, no one, um, we, we try not to be subtractive, right? We try to be additive. Uh, we try to add as, you know, uh, programs and services and, and people. Um, uh, but I think there is a, an acknowledgement. I think there is a recognition that we need to start addressing, um, 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 you know, th the loss of the, the tens of millions of dollars of one-time funds that we had a lot of the monies that we had to to hire people uh it, unfortunately the loss of 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 these uh monies is happening simultaneously when we're also uh the the state um economy is 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 taking a downturn um as mr de la Torre said we're uh, we're able to continue paying our bills we're able to uh have a cash flow where we could you know uh, uh, pay our our salaries and and our and and pay our bills and keep our, our lights on and our doors open. Uh, but I think we'd be doing a disservice to our workforce, uh, to all of our employees, and ultimately to our community, our students and families, if we um, do not 
do the right thing right now uh, by addressing uh, the, the financial challenges facing us um, um, uh, and, and just ho hope that somehow some things are going to be a lot better and we make no changes, we make no cuts, we make no um, uh, staffing uh, reductions and, um, and, and only kick the can down the road and, and just live to another day to later on <coughs> really then have to make um, uh, you know, uh, far worse decisions because uh, we're now <coughs> affecting people's livelihoods. And I'm very cognizant of that. We're very sensitive to that. And like I said, I, I, I wish I could even be more uh, positive about it, but I cannot make predictions for the future. But what I can say that for right now, 23-24, moving into 24-25, everyone who, who has a job right now with Calexico Unified School District is keeping a job with Calexico Unified School District uh, uh, on our account uh, when it comes to staffing and, and, and budgeting. So, um, 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 uh, so, so that's something that I, 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 I do feel fortunate that we're able to do. And again, thank you because a lot of our staff can sleep well at night, unlike some of our neighboring districts that are what they're going through. So right. again, thank you for the good work and all the staff. Absolutely. Thank you. So we have a motion by Mr. Contreras, second by Mr. Calderon. Sierra? Yes. Mr. Calderon? Yes. Mr. Contreras? Yes. Myself? Yes. Number 14, wait, number 15, resolution authorizing the purchase of educational materials to be used during summer camps 2023-2024. Move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Contreras, second by Mr. Calderon. Sierra? Yes. Mr. Calderon? Yes. Contreras? Yes. Myself? Yes. Number 16, resolution declaring the futility of public bidding for bakes, bake goods. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. Sierra? Yes. Calderon? Yes. Contreras? Yes. Myself? Yes. Number 17, resolution regarding disposition of surplus asset, non-asset for two school buses at Felipe Vega facilities. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Calderon, second by Mr. Contreras. Um, Sierra? Yes. Calderon? Yes. Contreras? Yes. Myself? Yes. Number 18, resolution assignment as out of major for 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Motion second. Motion by Mr. Contreras, second by Mr. Calderon. Sierra? Yes. <coughs> Calderon? Yes. Contreras? Yes. Myself? Yes. And we are reconvenience to close session again. Thank you.